without me. You got to tell them for yourself. the Lord everyone praise ye the Lord this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it thank you for uh, thinking it not robbery to come and to sit with us on tonight to be able to hear a word sourced out of God's uh, holy scripture. Amen. We are grateful tonight for his goodness and his mercy. Amen. He has kept us another week. We are blessed to be alive and in our right mind. Hallelujah. How many know you're in your right mind? Yeah. The devil thought he had us but somebody said a long time ago, we got away. And so we're grateful tonight for his goodness and for his loving kindness that have drawn us. Praise the Lord. We honor, amen, the spirit of Christ, who is indeed first and foremost in our life, uh, to our uh, wonderful uh, overseer, Bishop James B. Thornton, to our elder Travis, and to all of the ministering brethren, uh, we honor each and every last one of you. Praise the Lord to all of uh, the, their wives. We thank God for them in Jesus' name, praying for uh, the strength of the ministry. And uh, certainly, uh, last but definitely not least, to my wife, God bless you. Thank God for uh, her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, tonight, what I want to do is talk, praise the Lord, through a few verses, and I don't want to be lengthy, praise the Lord, I want to uh, get in the way and get out of the way, uh, I know you've got some more cooking to do at home while you're there, and distractions are in the house, uh, but uh, we appreciate your uh, patience and we appreciate your time on tonight to stop by and indulge into the word of God. Uh, let's bow, if you will, with me in a brief word of prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you tonight. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Thank you for the strength that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for keeping power. Thank you for another day that you have blessed us with. Glory and honor belongs to you. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you that you have kept us through this pandemic while others may be falling by the wayside. Some, hallelujah, have went to sleep. But Lord, you have saw fit to keep us alive in the land of the living, to testify, to worship to sing, to praise, to give your name the glory, to let your word go forth like a rushing mighty wind, hallelujah, to tell the world that God is still alive. Thank you, Jesus, and still reign on the throne. Tonight, we ask you through the morsel of word that you would encourage all of our hearts and build us up on our most holy faith. Bless your people one by one and name by name from far and from near. Keep us and we shall be kept. Protect us and we shall be protected. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come upon us, seen as well as unseen. We pray tonight 
that you will strengthen your leaders all across the globe in the name of Jesus. We pray tonight that you would allow your word to continue to unravel, continue to unveil yourself, continue, hallelujah, to minister to our hearts and speak to us with clarity and distinction even on tonight. Thank you for all of the great supporters. Thank you for all of those that hold up the arms of this ministry. Lord God, just because they have a love for this ministry and for the word of God, ultimately, we ask you that you would bless them and give them, hallelujah, the very desires of their heart. Make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. We pray tonight that you would forgive us of all our transgressions, blot out our iniquities, and remember our sins no more. We praise you, we honor you, and we lift up your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. If you can uh, hear us with clarity on tonight, let us know that you can hear us and we appreciate you. Uh, praise the Lord. We're striving to do something a little different. Amen. To uh, beef it up and to help our uh, presentation. We thank God for all of God's people. I want to say special thanks to Deacon Michael King. Praise the Lord for uh, being right there, uh, even with me on tonight. We thank God for him in a special way, in Jesus' name, to all of God's chosen vessels. All right. Tonight, right quickly, I want to talk on the subject dealing with hope. Dealing with hope. H-O-P-E. Dealing with hope. 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 Hope has, in all actuality, many, many uh, definitions and variations uh, according to uh, what perspective you may be actually dealing with it from. But the reason why I want to, and the Lord has impressed upon my heart tonight uh, to talk about hope, and we thank God for the awesome word that uh, our elder Travis presented on last Friday. What a word, what a word that he talked about, and he talked about confidence. Uh, we appreciate him in a great way for that uh, mighty word. And so tonight, the Lord has impressed upon uh, my heart to talk about hope. And it is because uh, when we really look around in the transition of our society and world today, uh, men's heart, according to the scripture, are failing them because of fear. Men's heart, men's heart, men, mankind, men and women, their hearts are failing them because of fear, fear, fear. People are fearful. People are afraid. And I'll be honest with you, and I'm not striving to bring any source of judgment to anyone there are Christians, God-fearing people that are actually dwelling in fear. And I want to help somebody tonight uh, by the grace of God while he is helping me. Praise the Lord. We want to use wisdom in this season. Uh, but using wisdom is different than having a spirit of fear. Some people are literally afraid. The Bible says that where uh, there is fear, there is also something called torment. Where there's fear, there is something normally that's called torment. And when there's torment, faith slash hope is diminished. Where there is torment, faith, vis a vis, slash hope is diminished and but the word of God gives us a, an encouraging word that lets us to know that God says that he has not given us a spirit of fear 
But what has he given us? Yes, yeah, somebody shout power. Somebody, somebody write in power. He's given us power, love, and what else? Yeah, a sound mind. There is something, there is something so awesome that when you can wake up in the morning and know without a shadow of a doubt that you have a sound mind mind. You haven't lost it. You're, you're not in handcuffs somewhere. They're not striving to put you in a stray jacket. They are not injecting you with some kind of medication to say that you need to calm down, but you have a sound mind. Glory be to God. I feel like jumping right there. There's something to know that while men's hearts are failing them because of fear that God has equipped us through his spirit, hallelujah, to have a sound mind. Hallelujah. And the reason why you can have a sound mind tonight, honestly, is because you have faith trust, hear this, and you have hope in Jesus Christ. Yes, yeah, so, so hope is what we're going to talk about for just a few minutes tonight by the grace of God. Hope, hope. What is, what is hope? What is hope? It is, it has been noted that hope uh, has the definition to say it is the feeling that what is wanted can be had or that events will turn out for the best. Uh, that's one aspect of hope. Hope also has been noted to mean it is a person, a person or thing in which expectations are centered around. Uh, it is a person or thing in which expectations, they are centered around. Uh, hope also means to look forward to with a desire and, hear this, Elder Travis, with a reasonable act of confidence. Yeah, to look forward to with desire and a reasonable act of confidence. Uh -huh. It is to believe, to desire or even to trust. But here is my favorite, uh, precious people of the Lord, my favorite of what hope really means is to be optimistic, hallelujah, uh, to have an optimistic attitude based on expectation. Glory be to God. To have an optimistic attitude based on expectation. Somebody, somebody type in, I'm expecting, I'm expecting from God. Hallelujah. To have optimistic attitude based on expectation or desire. Praise the Lord. Um, if you will, let's go to Romans tonight. Romans chapter 5 real quickly. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And <clears throat> Romans 5 and in verse, let's begin at verse number 1, but we really want to start at verse 3, but let's look at verse number 1. Uh, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God, hallelujah, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for Jesus being our mediator between God and man. Glory be to God. Uh, by whom also we have access by faith, glory, into this grace wherein we stand. We're standing in grace. Mm -hmm. And rejoice, hear this, rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Yeah, rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse 3 says, and this is where I really want to land at, verses 3 through verses 5, says, and not only so, but we glory in what? Woo! We glory in what? Eh. We glory in, yeah, it's all right to say it tonight. We glory in 
tribulations also. Mm -hmm. We glory in tribulations also. So not only do we glory in the hope of God, but we glory in tribulation. Glory be to God. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience, patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. All right, let's back up real quickly. We glory in tribulation. I'm in verse number three. We glory in tribulations. We glory. We give God praise. We give God thanks. We honor him because of the great things that he has brought us through. And watch this, the things that he has allowed us to uh, dive into. Now, there are some things in life that honestly we bring on ourselves. Come on, talk back to me tonight. There are some things that we bring on ourselves. But then there are things, bless the name of Jesus, that he allows us uh, not due to any circumstance of our own. He allows us to face what we read here tonight, tribulation. Yeah, man that is born of a woman is of a few days. And in those few days, he's full of trouble. And so we, 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 we glory, we give, we praise the Lord in tribulation. The Bible says in everything, in everything, give thanks. Then another scripture says, giving thanks always for all things. Yeah, we, we have to maturate. We have to mature to learn how to give God praise for everything. I got a question for you tonight. Are you giving God praise in this pandemic? Glory be to God. I got another question for you tonight. Not just have you been giving him praise in the pandemic. Watch this. Or have you been giving him praise for the pandemic? Oh, come on, bless the Lord tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Have you been giving him praise in it? And have you been giving him praise for it? Yes. Hallelujah. Two different things. You may, you may give him praise in something, but you may not really want to bless him for it. Bless the name of Jesus. But we ought to give God praise while we're in it and give God praise for it because through it all, he's doing something. Let's read and find out what he's doing. He is doing, watch this, verse 3 says, not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that, watch it, the tribulation worketh patience. Oh, so the trials that you and I suffer, the things that we see and go through, the things that we encounter, the, 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 the negative things that we go through, the tribulation, the trouble, the, 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 the things that seems to shake us sometimes. Yeah, come on, talk to me. The things that seem like it will rock our boat, but God allows us to learn something through every trial. We go from trial to trial, and we go from faith to faith. Glory be to God. And the tribulation itself is to work patience in us. The tribulation is to work patience patience. How many are becoming more patient? You're slowing down. Uh, you, 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 you don't, you're not as quick as you used to be. You, you, people may even still talk about you, and you know some folks talk about you behind your back, but, but you're more concerned about your peace of mind than you are about 
other men's thought processes about you. Woo, bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, some people will show themselves and show you who they really are, but you don't have to worry about what they show you, and you don't have to worry about who they really are. All God is concerned. I mean, let me help me and help somebody else. All God is really concerned with is how we treat people. You'll never get to judgment day and God's going to judge you based off what somebody else did to you. You're only going to be judged based off what we did back to them. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we learned that through this tribulation, it works patience. Somebody say patience. And from this patience, glory be to God, we learn experience. So, so through the trial, through the tribulation, through the testing thereof, hallelujah, whatever it is that God allows us to suffer, I learn how, that's what the songwriter said, I learn how to suffer. I learn how to live holy. I've learned, I've learned, I've learned how to live right. Bless the name of the Lord. So I learned how to suffer. So I go through the tribulation. The tribulation works the patience in me. And through the patience, when I settle down, I gain experience. I gain experience. Glory be to God. And the experience is not just for me while the experience is ultimately for you and for me, the personalized individual, but the experience that through the maturation, what the Lord does, he allows us to share from our experience with somebody else. This is why the scripture declares that if we continue to take heed both to ourselves and to the doctrine, we shall both save ourselves and those that will hear us. In other words, God will have some people that will be in our particular lane of life, L-A-N-E, the particular lane of life that God wants us to go down and when we follow the lane that God wants us in, God will have other people that he would allow us to connect with, hallelujah, that we are to encourage them to strengthen them and to uh, uh, witness to them through our experience. Revelation said it like this, that we overcome by the blood of the lamb, through the blood of the lamb, and by the word of their testimony. We got to share our testimony. You got to share your experience. You ought to share. No need you being ashamed that you were a drug addict. No need you being ashamed that you were a prostitute. Let me tell you something. He'll take you from a prostitute and make you a prophetess. I just said something. He will change your life. No need being ashamed that you used to be a drug dealer. No need you being ashamed that you used to be in a strip club. No need to being ashamed of who you used to be. You were under the grips of Satan. Glory be to God. But look at you now. Hallelujah. Even though you may not have it all together, you may be just like me. Don't have it all together, but it is in your mind to press toward the mark. Hallelujah. For the prize of the high calling. I dare somebody type in the night. I'm pressing. I am pressing. Glory be to God. I'm encouraged. Hey, glory be to God. And so it is here now that after this tribulation comes patience. And after the patience, we gain experience. And after the experience, here it is, we gain hope. 
How is it that we gain hope? How is it that we gain hope? We gain hope because when we look back through the experience that he allowed us to go through and when we find out when we come out, that experience that we gained, is, is a, it is a life experience. It is life changing that we can take it with us even though the tribulation is expired, hallelujah, but the patience that that we gained. Hallelujah. The experience that we gained and now we have gained some more hope. In other words, we are more optimistic. Our attitude has shifted. Hallelujah. Because now we have a greater expectation and a hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We have been through something and when we come from something, it makes us strong. How many people ever been broke, ever had very little money? Hallelujah. You learn how to save a buck or two when you get something. Yeah, I know a buck is an old classical word. Hallelujah. Uh, praise the Lord. But, but, but you know, you learn how to save. You learn. I learned something in this pandemic that everything we thought we needed before, hallelujah, we don't need all of that stuff. There's a whole lot of things that I ain't. I don't have no intentions on going back to, praise the Lord. Because when you find out that you got the essentials, hallelujah. Let me tell you another thing I found out. I'm excited tonight. Y'all, y'all deal, deal with me for a moment. I'm excited tonight because another thing I've experienced is that the essential things of giving God praise and worship is essential. Giving God the glory, hallelujah, worshiping him and lifting up his holy name and the word of God, hallelujah. You know, sometimes we try to produce 19,000 different ministries when we find out that the world right now can't even do anything with, with all those various ministries ministries, but there is something that everybody needs in their life. You need to pray, and you need to worship, and you need the word of God. Hallelujah. Yes, and so those things are essential. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, uh, let's move here right quickly. He says that we have this patience, we have this experience, and now we have this hope. Bless the name of Jesus. He says, and the hope, I'm in verse number five, and this hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. So this hope makes us not a shame. So when we have this hope and you know that you have this expectation of God, your head is not hung down. You are not inside target and you don't know who you are. If you see somebody that their head is hung down, you can tell them with boldness that Jesus can take care of it for you. You, you can walk down the streets of New York, praise the Lord, in Times Square and you can tell somebody that God God is still alive. You can walk on the lonesome streets of Baltimore and you can tell somebody that Jesus, hallelujah, got up on the third day. Glory be to God. There is a word that should be down in our bosom that we're willing to not be ashamed of this gospel. Hallelujah. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. The gospel. Thank you, Jesus. That's why we need the word of God. Somebody say, I thank God for the word. And so this hope that we have, we should not be ashamed. Glory be to God. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's important to understand that hope and faith, they both run parallel. I'm almost finished here. Give me, give me just a few more minutes. Hope and faith run parallel. Hope and faith runs parallel. You and I cannot have one without the other. You cannot have, you cannot have hope without faith. I'll say it again. Hope and faith run parallel. We cannot have hope without faith. Faith is based on hope. Let me say it again. Hope 
and faith run parallel. We cannot have hope without faith. Glory be to God. Faith is based on hope. Where there's no hope, there is no faith. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And this is why, because men's hearts are failing them because of fear. And where there's fear, there is torment. I said it earlier, and where there's torment, there is where faith and hope is diminished. Glory be to God. But I said earlier that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage somebody that may say tonight, but you won't say anything, but you're watching, you may say, Bishop, you don't know the detrimental things that I have been through. Maybe I don't, but you don't know some of the detrimental things that I've been through either. But let me share with you that we can ascertain hope and faith in Jesus. Glory be to God. If we hold on, if we trust the Lord, if we look beyond, hallelujah, what we are going through and learn how to trust him one more time. Hallelujah. I need somebody, hallelujah, to pray one more time, to fast one more time. I, I, I know the doctor may have given you a bad report. You, you may have gotten, you, you, you know, sometimes we look down the lineage of our of our of our life and we'll say we'll say well our family members got this disease and grandmama had this disease and granddad had this disease but don't you know that regardless of what somebody else had in the family God can bless you to be just the opposite glory be to God just because daddy was a drunk praise the Lord don't mean that you have to be an alcoholic beverage drinker just because mama decided hallelujah to go out and to not come back home don't mean that you have to do the children the self same way I dare somebody say I'm going to be different I'm going I'm going to break the cycle glory be to God if you believe God God will allow you watch this to be like Abraham and to hope against hope Glory be to God. He will allow us to be like Abraham. Hallelujah. When he was old, his body was failing him. His wife was now old, past the age of producing. Glory be to God. But the Bible said that Sarah laughed. Abraham doubted, hallelujah, but then all of a sudden something clicked in and he said, I'm going to try him one more time. And the scripture said that he had hope against hope, hallelujah. So in other words, hope against hope really means to continue to hope although the outlook doesn't really warrant it. Glory be to God. How, can I say that one more time? I feel like jumping out my seat tonight. <laughs> uh, hope against hope really says that I'm going to continue. In other words, I'm going to try him one more time. Glory be to God. I'm going, hallelujah, regardless of what the news says, I'm going to try God one more time time. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to hope against hope. And hope against hope means to continue to hope although the outlook does not warrant it. Glory be to God. I really shouldn't hope again because it looks like it's worthless. You know, some of us have been sick. Some people, you you yourself may have been sick. Glory be to God. Uh, uh, my wife uh, the last night was watching the Clark sisters and in the story of the Clark sisters, it was talking about uh, that one of them had been given the, the, the not much uh, longer to live. They were had a two percent chance of living, but they but 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 they hoped against hope. Glory be to God. Uh, that's what I'm saying. They hoped against hope. They 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 went back and prayed one more time. Glory be to God. They trusted God one more time, even though the doctors were saying that it's time to let go and to give it up. But God shifted the outcome. 
come. Glory be to God. And I told you hope means or it is to have an optimistic attitude based on expectation. Is there, are there anybody that's optimistic tonight that, 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 that you've got an attitude of gratitude, that, that your attitude that you're moving towards is expectation. Your desire is greater. You're moving in a greater, in a greater measure towards the things of God and you know that it's nobody but yourself. It is not your education. It is not your money. It is not your stimulus money you got in the mail, but grace and mercy, hallelujah, has allowed you and I to have more hope. Somebody shout, I'm gaining more hope. And so Abraham hoped against hope. Glory be to God. That was in Romans chapter 4. Uh, he hoped against hope. Bless the name of Jesus. But there's something uh, that, that, that I want to share with you before we dismiss on tonight. That, that even in the midst of hope, there is a way to hope even greater. Let's go there. There's a way to hope even greater. Uh, Psalms 42 and 5 declares, he talks about, uh, uh, let's go to Psalms 42 and 5 real quickly. Uh, Psalms 42 and 5 says something. It says, <clears throat> Psalms 42 and verse number 5. Reads on this wise, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. Listen, hope thou in God. Listen, he says he's talking to himself. Woo! Somebody said that you were you were half cocoa or half crazy if you talk to yourself. Well, I, I, I must be half cocoa and, 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 and three quarters crazy. You know why? Because I constantly talk to myself because I have to repeat the scriptures to myself so that I can believe the scriptures and remember what the word of God is saying. Hallelujah. Uh, he says, why art thou cast down? He's talking to himself. Listen to the psalmist. He says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? He's messed up. He's, he's, he's discombobulated. He's thrown into a state of confusion. He, he, his mind is, is not altogether right. But, but he has enough within him to question himself and to talk to himself. And listen what he says. He says what he's going to do. Hope thou in God, glory be to God. Listen to what he says after that. For I shall yet praise him. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to praise him. Let's run real quick. I, I want to leave that right there. Let's run real quick to Romans. Romans 12. And we're going to come right back to Psalms in the book of Psalms, uh, uh, 71, Romans, Romans, Romans 12, Romans 12 and verse number, verse number mm -hmm, 11 says, not slowful in business, fervent in spirit, fervent in spirit. We should be fervent in spirit. We should be on fire. Glory be to God. In our spirit, glory be to God. We should, then he says, serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. we, should, we should be fervent in spirit and fervent, glory be to God, in serving the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Listen to what he says. Rejoicing in hope. Eh! Rejoicing in hope. Rejoicing in hope. Hope. So in other words, in other words, when the enemy even strives to tell you, he don't know why you're hoping for what you're hoping for because the enemy don't, don't hear stuff until you pray about it out loud. Oftentimes, he can't get into your mind. He, don't, he can't read your thought processes. But what the enemy does, because we say stuff audibly oftentimes, and because oftentimes, if we're not careful, we speak negative things into the atmosphere. So the enemy will attack 
attach himself to the negativity and then try to bring, hallelujah, a climate of, 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 of disruption into our mind. Glory be to God. He'll talk to us. He'll, he'll speak to us. Yeah, that's he will. But, but, but what we got to do and learn is that when he speaks, we've got to remember this word. Hallelujah. For the word was written a four time for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have some hope. Glory be to God. But he says here, rejoice in hope yeah so 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 the next time the devil tell you it ain't gonna happen because you already are believing with great expectation and you've already got the desire and your attitude is optimistic glory be to God because you have hope in Jesus yeah thank you Lord I need you to just start praising God for what you know is already going to take place glory be to God he rejoicing in hope here. He's patient in tribulation. Glory be to God. And he's continuing instant in prayer. Glory. Can I say it again? He's rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation because you know God going to bring you out. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, he's bringing me out right now. And I'm going to continue instant in prayer. Woo! I, I don't have to wait. Ah! God, help me here. I don't have to wait for the prayer band to call me. I want the prayer band to call me, but I don't have to wait, hallelujah, for the ushers to usher me up to the front. I'm all ready. I'm just ready to drop down and pray. I'm ready to be instant in prayer. That's why you can make an altar wherever you go. Glory be to God. You can make an altar in your car, an altar in your home, an altar at your desk, an altar in your cubicle while you're at work, hallelujah, at the social security department. You can make an altar wherever you are. An altar at school. An altar bless the name of Jesus. While you are in the MVA line and you got to pray for the ignorant people that are around you. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! God help me here. You got to pray for the ignorant drivers praise the Lord that are around you. You got to learn how to be instant in prayer praise the Lord but he says we got to rejoice we got to rejoice turn with me turn with me we're going back to Psalms tell somebody we're going back we're going back we're going back to Psalms now and Psalm 71 I'm getting ready to let you go Psalm 71 and in verse number uh, 14 he says but I will Hope, here it is, here it is again, continually mm, and will yet praise thee more and more. God, help me here. Woo! Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I will hope continually. I ain't going to give up. Glory be to God. I'm not going to give in. Glory be to God. Things may shatter. Things may crumble. Things may fall. But we've got to learn to reside in that four-letter word called hope. I'm going to hope continually. And I will yet praise thee more and more, more and more more. You know, hope, hope when you attach hope. We got to get out of here. But when we attach hope with your praise, it ought to be, it ought to be like a snowball effect. It ought to be like a snowball at the top of the mountain that when it begins to go down to the bottom of the mountain, it picks up momentum. Watch this. Not only does it pick up momentum, but it picks up size. Ah, it is, it has, it has an addition to it. It, 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 it does not just add because we know when it comes to the kingdom of God, God has the ability to not just add, but, 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 but God knows how to multiply. 
Glory be to God. He'll multiply. So while things look like, bless the name of Jesus, hallelujah, things may be look like they're going haywire, look like, look like you're losing stuff. I want to tell you, hope again and hope continually and pray again and praise more and more and watch how the evolving door of what God will do for you. We ought to praise in hope. We ought to pray in hope. I'll say it again. We ought to praise in hope. I want you to write that in there. Praise in hope and pray in hope. Praise in hope. Pray in hope. Praise in hope. Eh, I'm going to pray in hope. You know why? Because my expectation is of the Lord. My expectation is in God. I am looking to the hills from whence cometh my help. And you know there are some things that only the Lord can help us in. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. I want to close right here. Psalms, Psalms 119. Psalms 119, real quickly, I'm closing. This is it right here. Psalms 119. Thank you for your patience. Psalms 119. Psalms 119 and uh, 49. Psalms 119 and 49. Psalms 119, 49. He says, remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. God has given every last one of us a word. He has spoken a word that has brought inspiration into your spirit. I want you to remember the word. Mm, that the Lord gave to you. You know why? Because he remembers the word that he has given unto his servant. I want you to real quickly stay right there in the same book of one, Psalms 119. And I want to show you something that's important to me. I hope it will mean something to you. In verse 81. My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. Same, same book, but verse 114. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Here it is. There's two words. I want you to remember tonight as we prepare to close, two words, two words. All three of them verses that we just talked about, all three, 49, 81, and verse 114, all of them had something that had parallelism. It was dealing with the word, the word, this word. This word is important. This word is important, but also the word that God has spoken to you directly of something he's going to do for you. Don't be distracted. Don't be discouraged. Don't be alarmed. And please, don't be dismayed. Fear thou not, according to Isaiah 41 and 10, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will comfort thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. God bless you tonight. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. I want to pray with you in the name of the Lord. And I pray that this word has fallen on good ground. And if it be God's will, 
it will bring forth fruit because while one watereth, one planteth, it is God that's going to give the increase. Will you pray with me in the name of the Lord? Father, we thank you tonight for your goodness and your mercy. We ask you that you would allow your word to fall on good ground in the name of Jesus. Thank you. We praise you for every soul that has chimed in tonight, every soul that shall go back and look at this later and receive it as an announcement. Bless is only you can. We pray tonight for sons and daughters. Glory be to God. We pray for every soul that is watching tonight. We pray that you would encourage their hearts. Yeah, we pray that you would build them up, strengthen them. Let them know that there shall be greater glory even after this. Help us to hope continually, hallelujah, and to yet praise you more and more. Help us, Lord God, to praise you while we're waiting patiently and while we're expecting something to come forth. Help us to hold tenaciously to your unchanging hand. I pray for my brothers tonight that you would bless the men, strengthen every man in the name of Jesus, and make us the sons that you've called us to be. Equip us and strengthen us with boldness and might. Bless our inner man. Hey, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless the women of God. Bless your daughters in the name of Jesus. Strengthen them. And, God, we pray that you would allow them to rise like never before, to be true worshipers, mm -hmm. to love their husbands and to give honor where honor is due. Give them the boldness, my God, hallelujah, to love one another, the strength to support one another. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for the strength of the entirety of our community. Bless as only you can. We'll give your name the praise. We'll give your name the glory. And we ask you, Lord, that you would allow your Holy Spirit to fall fresh. Allow your Holy Ghost to rest upon us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We honor you. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, precious people of the Lord. God be with you. God dwell with you. In Jesus' name. Keep hoping. Keep believing. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Hath God said it, and shall he not do it? Hath God spoken it, and shall he not make it good? I bless you until next time. Say that last line, say that last line.